Okay, so if we're gonna go out and we're gonna build a cloud service and we're gonna build artificial intelligence. So what you didn't know was um, almost three years ago, we started building out the cloud service. While everybody else was still building bolt-on technology, Keller Williams, on your behalf, was connecting the data. I'd like to take credit for it, but he's the rascal that did it, right? I didn't do it. Yes. And he kept looking at me trying to explain, isn't this awesome, aren't you excited, don't you get this? And I'm going, I said, real estate dude, you know, <laughs> agents matter, right, blah, blah, blah. I'm going through my litany of what really matters, right? And he's going, yeah, but this is exciting. Look what we can do, and I'm going, ah, okay, keep doing that. So I just want to be transparent here, right? Uh, all of a sudden, I woke up one day and realized that, uh, thank God we had at least one person in the organization who was smart enough to start doing this uh, without asking for permission. Uh, yeah. The other, the other thing is um, we started working on Kelly. You know, it was announced um, from the family reunion stage a couple of years ago, hey, we're going into business with this other company, this artificial intelligence company. And that deal fell apart because even though we'd already started giving them money, they came back and they said, well, we'll build artificial intelligence. We're going to charge you $10 million, $10 million. Um, your, your agents are all going to have it and help build it. Um, and you'll have exclusivity for what, two years? Uh, two years. And then the entire industry will, will be able to use it. And we're going to own your phone numbers, everyone's phone numbers, with a consumer. And it was Mo Anderson and it was Mary Tennant who both went, uh, we're not doing that deal, mm -hmm. right? And Josh is sitting over there going, well, I think, I think we could actually do it and we could do it less expensive and we could own it all. Why don't we do that? So we did, that's what we did and it's called Kelly, okay? Now, understand that Kelly is, is what, what you call the interface, but there's a whole other part of artificial intelligence that is just operating that we don't call Kelly. So what, the key distinction is the app that crashes and it's buggy and all those things is not Kelly. Kelly is the engine running all of our data and algorithms, and then we created an app in the App Store to start letting you interface with this data, and we just called that Kelly. And those are the two pro uh, projects we have running at the same time. Yeah, so if you think about artificial intelligence uh, for just a second, there's a couple of layers of it. One is actually the platform from which artificial intelligence is created. So um, Apple has their platform, uh, Amazon has theirs, um, Google, Google has the micro, yeah. They all, they all built this, right? And then, and then they built on top of that, um, they built Alexa and Siri. So those are, those are two different things. One is the platform to develop and then is their version. You with me? So when a real estate agent says that they are now, they've built their own artificial intelligence. I remember reading an Eminem article, I built my own artificial intelligence to welcome people at open house and do those things. Understand that's the third layer. That's actually not artificial intelligence at all. That, that's not it, okay? So think about this. How, how amazing is Siri and how much has it changed your life? Other than the weather and some news and, and playing a song, right? How about, how about Alexa? Change your life? So what they did was, they, that was basically planting a flag in the ground 10 years ahead of schedule, meaning that they wanted to get out and begin training their artificial intelligence built on their platform. Uh, and so they went very wide. So they didn't pick a vertical. They didn't, they didn't pick anything specific. They just went very wide. When you go very wide with artificial intelligence, you get an Alexa or a Siri. Or the, Kelly. Well, if you go deep, you go Kelly. Right. Yeah. So in other words, the, um, the, what the battle in the, in the world right now is now each industry, someone is gathering the data and is going deep with artificial intelligence, right? Okay. So no matter what industry we're going into, if we're going to be innovative in the technology world, we're literally going to have to have what, what you would probably just call an innovation engine, the, the ability to innovate in real time, right? So let's go to real estate. So if we're going in the real estate industry, this is the way we think about it. And, and um, that is you have the consumer, you have the real estate agent, and in our world, you have a market center. 
And the, the language that we use about this is we say it's a, it, we should think of it as the virtual consumer, the virtual agent, and the virtual market center. And what we mean by that is your phone is the remote control of your life, right? I even asked Brad Inman, he thought I was, I was um, probably trying to trick him or something. And I said, when you wake up in the morning, how soon before you go to get your phone? And he goes, well, probably too soon. I went, oh, no, I think we all do. I, I think it's become the remote control of our life. In many cases, it is the alarm that wakes us up. <laughs> but it literally is, it's, it's where our world, our world lives, right? Yes. The, um, the interesting, here's, here's a, just an interesting, now I'll get to that in a second. So the point is, is that in, in the fourth industrial revolution, the, the, the real estate consumer is a virtual consumer, meaning that they, they, everything about real estate starts digitally and then, and then is enhanced physically. That the real estate agent of the future, everything that they need to do in their business, they can either do by their phone or their laptop, and, and everything physically is an enhancement on top of that. And the real estate office of the future, by the way, is going to be is virtual. What I mean by that is, is that everything that can be done to support a real estate agent will be done virtually, and it's physically enhanced. That's the world. That's going to be the medical profession. It's the legal profession. It's the architecture profession. It's every profession known to man will literally go under that scrutiny, if you will. Now, a lot of people think that when I say virtual market center, he goes, well, what's going to happen? Say, well, here's the thing. The, just as a sidebar, the thing is, is that um, Amazon did its best to destroy the book business, right? Put borders out of business uh, and redefine that experience. And now, by the way, they're putting in bookstores, right? Why, why, did, why did Amazon then go back into the physical business after it claimed it was going to be the digital juggernaut? Well, a good example would be to look over at Apple, and that is um, Apple is the number one retailer per square foot sales in the world. Tiffany's is number two, by the way. But Apple is number one. Amazon looks up and says, wow, we control digital, and yet we have less than 5% of all retail. In other words, they're not that significant in the world of retail in the end. And they looked up and they said, oh, so we have to be physical. So they went out and bought Whole Foods. Why would a digital company buy a, a large physically-based business? Go ahead. Because they needed to be near the people, and, and physical is, is the still primary way that most of the commerce is happening. So when you look at consumer goods, uh, all the, again, Walmart, forget valuations, but Walmart has a much greater uh, volume of revenue than Amazon, and, and for Amazon to compete with Walmart on this new juggernaut race, they're going to have to get into the retail space. Yeah, the only reason why malls suffer today is because the stores in those malls did not go virtually based, physically enhanced. So what they didn't do was they didn't create a, they didn't reinvent the experience around their products and services in a digital form that then could be enhanced and complemented by their physical location. Right? Gary, another really that actually is true. Quick example is Casper, the online mattress company, is now standing up retail spaces to sell mattresses. And they've learned that no matter amount of marketing and, and, and the greatest consumer experience, uh, their, their CEO's quote was, you know, retail isn't dead, just boring retail is dead. And we believe that to be true across all physical experiences. So market centers aren't dead, boring market centers are dead. Yes. <laughs> By the way, real estate agents aren't dead, boring real estate agents are dead. <laughs> Consumers are good. <laughs> we love our boring customers, right? 